At first, Rainworld is punishingly hard and confusing, and many players are put off in the first hour or so, before they really click with it, and but it's worth persevering with. So here's a guide that aims to clear up that early confusion. You should consider this guide as a spoiler, because the very mechanisms of the game are a puzzle to work out, but we'll keep footage of cool exotic creatures to a minimum, so you can discover that sort of thing for yourself. Also, bear in mind the game may be rebalanced in future updates, based on player feedback to make it fairer. So Rainworld gives you very little instructions at the start, other than some visual tutorials for the controls. The worm-like yellow animal you see is a cryptic guide, which will sometimes point to important stuff such as the way to nearby food, the way to sanctuary, and even give you glimpses of the game's goal to find your family. It'll also give you a flashing red warning if unseen enemies are nearby. Another useful piece of guidance are the three white bars that mark exits to the next room, the white triangles that mark a passageway to somewhere on the same room, and the white box that marks a nearby save point. I'm not going to go into details here, this is the stuff that you learn quickly, what you can eat, what can eat you, and what creatures provide various weird assistance. You're fairly weak, but not defenceless. Little bits of black detritus can be picked up in either hand and thrown at enemies to deter them. Stuff you pick up will flicker white briefly, but they don't always appear in the same place each time. Those little spears you can pick up, you can throw them at enemies, but you can also use them as cunning platforms if you know where to put them. For food, at first you'll need to hunt for blue fruit and big flies, and each time you eat, you're stirring one piece of food for hibernation, a major concept of the game. The game's save points are tiny little rooms that you can safely hibernate in, but you can't just use them whenever you feel like it. They're very sparse in the game, and you can't even use them until you've eaten enough food. As you watch this video, you'll realise how they tie into the greater game. Now let's explain some of that now. In Rainworld, time is split up into cycles. Every cycle, you have a certain amount of time to explore, eat enough food, then get to a hibernation point before the clock in the bottom left runs down. If you don't, the rain will fall increasingly hard until you die. Every time you hibernate, the game moves on to the next cycle of time. If you die, you return to the start of the cycle, in your hibernation point. At the start, death has no penalty other than winding back the clock but you'll soon discover it's not that simple. So let's check out the HUD. It only appears when you need it to, or you can tap right bumper, or whatever you're using, and the longer hold brings up the map. The seven circles represent how much food you've collected. Hibernation consumes four pieces of food, so always aim to keep this above four. The bottom left is your clock. The little dots around the outside will deplete as time goes on. Around zero, the rains begin. As you play the game in complete cycles, you may well notice that sometimes there are more dots there than others, which means you'll have more time to explore before the rains come. The funny symbol on the clock is more mysterious, and indeed the key to the game, in more ways than one. So mild spoilers ahead. The game doesn't explicitly call it Karma, but I've seen a few players call it this, and it's a good name. Essentially, it's a record of how well you're surviving in the game. If you complete a cycle and successfully hibernate, in the next cycle your karma will go up by one, and you'll get a different symbol on your clock. If you die and respawn at the start of a cycle, your karma value will go down again. Unless you're already at the bottom of course, in which case no harm done. And be warned, you don't keep your karma level if you quit the game. The main benefit of karma is that it grants you access to new regions. Um, so what's to stop you grinding up your karma to the top in an easy location? Well, the food is never located right next to your hibernation point, and food you eat in one location may not reappear in the next cycle. Uh-oh. There are certain flowers in the game that preserve your karma when eaten, but like many things, they won't always be in the same place next cycle. Oh, and if you eat a glowing mushroom, be prepared for a bad trip. Yeah, I suppose we'd better mention this. 
you'll probably have found that you can hold two items at once, usually in the form of weapons, but you can store some non-edible stuff in your belly, in the same way as you hold down the button to eat. Then you can regurgitate it back up on demand by holding the same button. It's very handy for storing items that you might not want to throw away accidentally. We leave this till last because it's the end point of working out how the basic game works. A ring world is split into regions with locked gates between them. To open the gates, your karma needs to be high enough. The symbol shown on the picture of your side of the gate is what level karma you need to have reached to unlock it. I found two gates in the outskirts. The one you'll probably find first requires a few cycles worth of karma. The second one at the scavenger toll requires a bit more. This door mechanism simply forces you to prove that you're capable of surviving in a dangerous new area. Ok, that's it for the early confusing stuff. Uh, do leave a comment if you have more, or better, advice for beginners, and uh, let's help each other out. And check out my Let's Play series if you want to see me painstakingly work out all the stuff I've just told you about in this video, and consider becoming a patron of the channel if you want to help me make more stuff like this. Uh, thanks for watching.